Hey folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. Excuse my voice a bit, but I've got a bit of a cold at the moment. So yesterday I was reading a thread where uh, some people were talking about migration era swords. Now this is a slightly later Viking era sword. I actually don't own an earlier um, kind of migration era period sword, but they're of a similar form. And one of the things that someone said was that uh, the migration era swords always look so unbalanced because they've got these big type 10 choppy blades and uh, the fairly minimalistic hilts, but even more than that. So whereas this has got metal components, um, in this case steel, uh, and usually iron uh, on the originals, very occasionally other types of metal like bronze, but usually, uh, usually iron. Um, on the earlier migration era swords, um, so if we go back to uh, the sort of the first period that the so-called Anglo-Saxon period starts in, in Britain uh, and the Frankish period in France, this period when Germanic tribes were kind of moving into what had been the Roman Empire, we see that a lot of the hilt parts are organic. Um, now, I have to say, so there's a, there's a little bit of a misunderstanding here to begin with. So just because they're organic hilt parts, uh, whereas the Viking era swords or late Anglo-Saxon Frankish period swords have uh, metal hilt parts, that doesn't actually mean that between those two, the swords handle terribly differently. First of all, this doesn't really balance the sword very much. If we take the hilt parts off this blade and then just hold the blade with a, with a glove or whatever, or just holding the tang, um, then you'll find that it actually doesn't feel very different. Um, the fundamental reason for that is that the metal guard doesn't really make much difference at all, okay? Because it's right next to the hand and it's in fact in front of the hand. People have a, I think, a preconception that pommels are always a counterbalance. Well, actually, what gives the balance, uh, what predominantly gives the uh, balance and feeling and heft to a sword is actually the distal taper of the sword and the shape of the blade. Um, the, the pommel is so close to my hand that it doesn't really act as any sort of balance or cantilever at all. It just, it, it's just there, it's just next to my hand. So when you're dealing with something with such a short hilt as this, the pommel doesn't really provide much of a balancing effect. It's not like a later period um, sword where actually you've got a pommel on the end of a long lever. And if we look at something like the um, Langmesser, for example, uh, the Langmesser often doesn't really have a pommel. It might have a little cap, um, but it, it gets its balance um, partly from just the form of the blade and partly from that, so it's got a long handle and that long handle itself has a leverage effect. But with these early swords, which are very short hilted, we're not really getting a balancing effect. So the first thing to say is actually whether the hilt parts are made of horn or wood or whether they're made of metal um, or ivory or whatever, it doesn't make an awful lot of difference. It makes a bit of a difference to the overall weight because obviously having metallic hilt parts does add to the overall weight of the weapon. But then we have to counter that with the fact that these later period blades have practically always got a very broad fuller or groove up the center of the blade. And this of course reduces the overall weight of the weapon. So uh, with earlier migration era swords, we very often don't have that broad fuller. We have a simply a lenticular or um, almost flat section blade. Um, and therefore the blade itself or the total weight of the weapon might be more. And admittedly, that might mean that it's slightly more blade heavy than some of the later swords. So that really comes back to the point that these later period swords, if we're looking at Viking era or late Anglo-Saxon era swords, uh, they might be better balanced than a early migration, an early Anglo-Saxon or a migration era sword, but that's largely due to the form of the blade, not due to the material of the hilt. So that's the first thing to say is that uh, the balance of those swords is dictated by the fact that you've got a broad, choppy great blade and a short hilt. Those are the predominant um, governing factors, not what the hilt's made of. Now, the second point that I would say to these people who look at those swords and go, well, I literally, someone said, I don't see how anyone could fence with these. Well, what does fence mean? In the purest sense, fence simply means Offense and defense, it means fighting. Okay, the Germans would just say fechten, uh, fighting, right? So, 
The question is, if a blade is incredibly kind of blade heavy and not as kind of uh, tapered and uh, with, you know, such a uh, sort of c more complex, should we say, um, movement dynamics of later period swords, if it's essentially just a great big chopper, which it has to be said, these are, um, then how can you fight them with them? Well, I will simply say, before I say the obvious, these were meant to be used with shields. So as in a recent video I did where I said there are essentially two types of swords. The swords that are designed to be used by themselves, sabers, long swords, um, rapiers to some extent, uh, this kind of thing, small swords. And there are swords that are designed to be used almost always, or certainly intentionally, with a shield. So earlier migration period swords, uh, Viking era swords, um, you could say falchions, uh, these kind of, you know, arming swords of the first half of the sort of medieval period, in fact, quite late into the medieval period. These are designed to be used with a companion object, usually a shield, sometimes a buckler, which means that the sword doesn't have to do as many things as these later period swords do. These have to offend and defend, so they have to be lighter, they have to be quicker, they have to balance more closely to the hand. If you have a weapon which it's 90% of its job is to just hit really hard and chop bits off people, whilst the shield does the job predominantly of defending you, well then you can clearly specialise in a weapon which hits harder. And, of course, <laughs> my answer to these people, how could you fight with a weapon which is so unbalanced? Well, no one says that about the axe, do they? And I have to say, out of these two weapons, the sword has a greater reach than most one-handed axes, um, and almost as much chopping power. Yep, admittedly, the axe will probably be more effective against um, armour of any kind, and indeed can double up as um, it's going to mash up shields, you can use it for hooking, there's all sorts of advantages to an axe, as well as disadvantages. Um, it's, it's a different weapon with different strengths and weaknesses. But the fact is that people don't say, how could anyone fight with an axe because it's so unbalanced? But really, you're not going to get much more unbalanced than an axe because pretty much all of the weight, all of the weight that you really notice is right at the end of the weapon. And you've only got an edge of about six inches or depends on the type of axe. Um, but the fact is that if you're using this with a shield and the shield's providing the, uh, the primary defense and the axe is just striking and hooking, maybe sometimes jabbing, maybe sometimes um, hooking with the back end and pommeling, then it's a very, very effective weapon. And within that, uh, that period and that context, this is like a more nimble axe with a far longer cutting blade. And you can thrust effectively with it, you can reach further with it, it's got better hand protection and uh, you have to admit social reasons as well as higher status. Also importantly, it's more convenient to wear. You can stick it in a scabbard. You can wear axes, but they're a bit uncomfortable to wear. So, to summarise, <laughs> um, when you look at migration era swords and you think, oh, they're so unbalanced, how could, how could anyone use them? First of all, their balance is due not to the material of the hilt, but the form really of the blade, the proportions of the blade. And that's quite similar to lots of later period swords, firstly. Secondly, they're almost always used with a shield, so their main job is just to attack, and they're, they're, um, the shield provides the defence. And lastly, if an axe is effective for fighting, well then why shouldn't an unbalanced sword be? <laughs> um, because that is kind of like an axe, but in some ways better, longer and longer edge, greater reach, this kind of thing. Anyway, I hope that's been somewhat useful. And uh, apologies for my cold, I hope I'll recover soon. And uh, see you guys for the next video. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.